Paul Teorash, everybody, to the Irish Furian. I am the Irish Furian. Okay, in this video, we're going to uh, look at the debacle um, the, about Verona Murphy. And she was a Fine Gael uh, um, candidate that was deplatformed by um, uh, her glorious leader, Leo Varadkar, uh, the unelected puppet that uh, was groomed by the EU for um, the enactment of interests outside of this country within Ireland and uh, we're gonna we're gonna look at that particular um, instance and event as it took place uh, I have online uh, as usual the Google searches and we're gonna look through the different uh, news outlets and then that'll be followed by um, uh, a video interview uh, between Friedker and Pat Kenny on uh, Verona Murphy. Okay, so I'll take you there. First, uh, as usual, we go into the 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 the, the Google search, and um, yeah. So as you can see, a few of them have a few of the well-known uh, uh, lying uh, legacy media has um, done a number of articles on the, the, the Irish Times. The Independent, Irish Examiner, Journal, uh, Joe, uh, .ie, The Sun, .ie, Belfast Telegraph, RTE, Buzz, .ie, all of the usual suspects. <clears throat> so if we go to the, G the Irish Times, um, I will just get my little interaction window ready. So uh, Leo Varadkar. Uh, glad Verona Murphy did not get elected. This article was in December the 20th, uh, 2019, and um, by Fiach Kelly. Tishik Leo Varadkar said he is glad the controversial former Fine Gael candidate Verona Murphy did not win last month's Wexford by election. Miss Murphy was deselected as a Fine Gael general election candidate for the constituency this week, having become embroiled in controversy over comments she made about immigration during the recent campaign. She suggested that some asylum seekers may have to be deprogrammed and that young children may be manipulated by terrorist ISIS groups. Um, in terms of, Ver of Verona herself, quite frankly, and I believe this is just, they're quoting Leo Varadkar here, um, I'm glad she didn't get elected because what we have seen in her recent interviews is that she unfortunately does harbour these views towards migrants. Mr. Uh, Varadkar told political correspondents on Friday, Oh, don't say anything nasty towards his beloved sacred cow, migrants. You know, we, we heard the comment about Wexford Bridge and London Bridge, you know. That is raising the specter that migration may result in terrorist attacks in Ireland. And that's just not factual. And is just really inflammatory, I think. Right, so speaking reason about security and uh, uh, facts uh, about what we know, and about security for the country is um, inflammatory. Okay, so in an interview on Southwest Radio on Thursday, Mrs. Murphy said her apology over the comments had been sincere and that it was absolutely untrue to suggest that they were part of a strategy to pick up an anti-migrant sentiment. She said the media, the media had distorted what she had said about migrants. The issue I raised, raised was a security one. We have to protect ourselves. Do we have to wait for a London Bridge incident on Wexford Bridge. So, you know, she makes the point here that um, what she said about, about uh, migrants was not anti-migrants, it was anti the system, the possible failings of a system and the, and the, and the uh, possible weak links in, a, in, in this system of migration, right? There shouldn't even be a system of migration. Why is there a system of migration? Well, we know why there is. Well, we covered that. But I must uh, do, it, do a video on the Global Compact for Migration um, very soon. Um, Irish Times. Okay. And then we move on to the independent.ie. And we go down through this article. And it says, Varadkar drops controversial candidate Mar Verona Murphy as her apology wasn't sincere. Tishik feared we would probably have more of this if she ran for Fine Gael again. 
<coughs> Taoiseach Liu Varadkar said he decided to deselect Verona Murphy as a Fine Gael election candidate because her apology for her controversial comments about migrants wasn't sincere. In her unsuccessful by-election campaign, Ms. Murphy said asylum seekers coming to Ireland have to be deprogrammed that again as they carry, they carry angst and may have been infiltrated by ISIL. And it fades out here because you have to log in to um, the Independent to get the rest of it. She all claimed that children as young as three were being manipulated by ISIL. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, then if we go down to the Irish Examiner. And I do want to talk about this here because we can learn something from this. So here's how you, uh, you pick up on rhetoric, okay? Without even going further down into the article, um, I'm just going to talk about the title itself first. So it says here, widespread condemnation for Verona Murphy after asylum seeker comments. Okay, this is the first time I'm going to take it that this article was put out there. And the language used is widespread condemnation. By who? This is the first time that this, uh, I'm going to take it, that this information is being put out by a news outlet. So how is there widespread condemnation? You know, doesn't the, doesn't the information have to get out there first before we find out what the response is? So you already know straight away what you're dealing with is rhetoric. Rhetoric, rhetoric. Okay? And so we moved, that's by Elaine Lachlan. And uh, if we read down along in the fine print what she says, uh, a Fine Gael by-election candidate has been accused of cynically using a vulnerable group of people to deflect from the failings of government. Now, first off, who's vulnerable? Are you going to tell me that migrants coming here are vulnerable when they've been given houses ahead of Irish people? Like, we know there's, there are internal housing lists kept separate from, from the main housing list in Ireland. There, I think there's even four of them. Secret and internal housing lists that you have to demand that you be put on in order to uh, compete. And the reason that they, they've separated up the housing lists like this, the reason they have separate internal housing lists, is so that the numbers don't show up on the main housing list that you have all these competing uh, and uh, uh, people of foreign extraction actually getting houses ahead of people who've been on the waiting list for years, Irish people. That's the purpose of these internal and secret housing lists. Okay, so if people are actually being supported from and, and there's, 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 there's migrants coming in here from India, from Africa, who are getting jobs, who are getting jobs ahead of Irish people. Um, as part of the supporting of the system of mass immigration into Ireland, you know, that there, there are people, the, these people are getting jobs ahead. Like Cork City is what's termed, was officially called by the, I think Cork City Council, uh, a, a sanctuary city, right? It, it, the laws have been bent over backwards to give, um, migrants can vote in local elections, the minute their feet touch the ground here, they can vote, vote politically, the minute their feet hit the ground, okay? Uh, also, uh, the law has been changed so that migrants can work um, while they're waiting to have their, uh, I believe this is true, while waiting to have their, their status um, completed. They can work. Like, how much more can you support, how much more can you give to people entering your country for the first time, these kind of things, you know? And so how does that make them vulnerable? There are 10,000 Irish people homeless. There are 80,000 set for eviction. That should, that should tell you everything. Who's vulnerable? It's definitely not the migrants that are coming here. There's no vulnerable group. You know, so Verona Murphy is standing in a Wexford by-election uh, for Fine Gael, has apologised for remarks made to three different media organisations about asylum seekers and has visited a direct provision centre in her constituency. However, members from across the opposition have lashed out at Mrs Murphy who suggested asylum seeker children as young as three years of age need to be deprogrammed as they may have been manipulated by ISIS. Labour leader Brendan Howland said it was a cynical move to think Mrs Murphy could be re rehabilitated 
by simply visiting asylum seekers and issuing a statement apologizing for her remarks. Rehabilitated. So what does that tell you? What's the language there being used? Rehabilitated. So uh, Verona Murphy is, is, uh, needs rehabilitation because she has um, an opinion on immigration into this country, right? So she's accused of wrong think. She was deplatformed by her political leader of her party for even speaking about immigration. You know? So when you have this constant suppression and oppression of the native people being able to stand up and speak out for their own people, while the traitors in the media and the traitors in politics continually aim political rhetoric at us and at, at the Irish, the native Irish, and uh, then they go to say that the people coming in here are vulnerable. No, that's not on. So it says, um, in, inverted commas here, it says, using the most vulnerable people who are in a place of safety uh, as a sort of shield to rehabilitate a candidate for a political purpose is just not acceptable. <clears throat> a place of safety. Uh, is, are there any places of safety for the 10,000 10, native Irish people sleeping on the streets tonight? Is there? Why has our government allocated 68 million for these places of safety while 10,000 of our people sleep on the streets? Hmm? Where's the place of safety for them? Sitting Fianna Fáil TD for Wexford, James Brown. Ah! Accused Mrs. Murphy of targeting vulnerable asylum seekers to distract from the government's poor record on homelessness, health and other issues. She's clearly campaigning on this issue of immigration. Now she's raised it on these three different interviews. And that's what she's trying to do is to distract from the lack of services and lack of delivery for Wexford. And instead is targeting a vulnerable group in our society. Vulnerable, 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 vulnerable. Rhetoric. Her comments are absolutely outrageous. They are totally wrong outrageous and are totally wrong and the vast majority of people in Wexford do not agree with them. He added, I would have no, in, this is an inverted commas, I have no question about condemning it if anyone in my own party made similar comments. They are absolutely outrageous. Right, talking about immigration, mass immigration into Ireland, which is clearly happening, is outrageous. Okay, Social Democrat co-leader Roisin Shortall said, Mrs. Murphy's comments were reprehensible. And ill-advised. Female shame. Female shame. <laughs> so she said visiting the direct provision centre was a cynical move. Okay. So, um, right, we'll get on to that interview. I'll just give you a look at this interview. And we'll look at it together. And then um, I'll give you my opinion on it afterwards. Because um, it's only me talking here. <laughs> you can throw your opinions in the comment box later. <laughs> Okay, so bum, bum, bum. Verona Murphy, Murphy is not going to be a candidate in Wexford the, the next time. She has said that herself, mm -hmm. and, she's and she's going to take time out to see whether she's any political future or not. Again, Again you supported her after she had apologised for the remarks she made, but now she's deselected. You know, explain. Yeah, well, she made the remarks which she made, which were were very wrong and very hurtful to yeah. some of our migrant communities uh, after the <laughs> Right, so he says, um, uh, our comments were very wrong and were very hurtful to some of our migrant communities. Okay, let's, let's, let's unpack that, right? So, um, who is hurt? Who is hurt? Anybody know? Any evidence of this hurt? No? No, no evidence? Scarring? Scar tissue? Visitors to the doctor's office, paid for by the Irish taxpayer, no? Um, and uh, some, was the word, some of our migrant communities. Which ones? Which ones? I want to know which ones. Let's continue. That she, that she made, a made a full apology, apology and a and full, full attraction, attraction, retraction. retraction. Uh, and, and for me, that was enough. Uh, journey, journey of somebody apologizes, apologizes retracts. retracts. Uh, I'll accept that. She was also a first-time candidate, so, you know, it was an experience and we gave her more leeway than we would have others. What changed is uh, towards the end of the campaign, she then released this video, which you may have seen, um, which indicated that the apology wasn't sincere and she tried to say that 
there was a media conspiracy or a Dublin elite conspiracy uh, against her. And for me, that indicated, uh, one, that she wasn't sincere uh, in her apology and retraction. And secondly, that we would probably have more of this again. And that's why I reckon. So, so she can't voice, she can't voice whether <clears throat> she believes that there is a, 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 a media, a media machine working against anything she might say about immigration. So the fact that the fact that we have here a guy who's half Indian and he's going to pull that card in a moment and you're going to see that. This guy here is half Indian who um, clearly doesn't want her talking about immigration. Um, uses uh, uh, laughable rhetoric about people hurt in some communities, but not others. Migrant communities, some migrant communities, but not others. The fact that uh, um, she then, the fact that he's saying that and that she was deplatformed <laughs> uh, means that there's a conspiracy. Um, I think all evidence points to the obvious. Commander. Tonight, tonight that she, that she uh, be removed from the ticket that she has been. She, she may be coming though from her background as someone representing Holiers mm. who has experience, or the members have, of migrants of yeah. all shapes and colours and sizes making their way onto trucks and costing huge amounts of money to the truckers or the trucker companies and embarrassing the truckers and causing them all sorts of hassle. So she feels perhaps that she hasn't been given a chance by Finnegal to explain herself. Um, you know, I can understand how that might form part of her personal experience, um, but like you and me, she's somebody who lives in this country, and we encounter migrants all the time. If we're patients in hospital, um, we're probably going to see a lot of staff who are from other countries. Um, if you go into any big company... Um, That's fine, but I would prefer to see more Irish people uh, working in hospitals. I would like to see uh, um, people of Irish ethnicity working in Ireland. Uh, why would I be so outrageous to say such a thing? Because I'm Irish and I live in Ireland and I don't want to see the rest of the world um, taking the jobs and the houses of my people in my country. Is that so outrageous to say? If you heard the same thing from a Nigerian man in Nigeria saying, I don't want Chinese people taking jobs from Nigerians in Nigeria, would that be so outrageous? small company anywhere in Ireland you're going to see uh, staff who've come here from other parts of the world to work and the truth is uh, for the vast majority of migrants uh, including members of my own family my, my father is Indian as you know uh, these are people who make our economy stronger uh, they're people who run our public services um, they're people who well, the people who fill a position anybody who fills that position makes the economy stronger you know uh, like I, I, I made the point in a previous video that my father worked 50 years of his life as a train driver um, driving 25 miles to work and back on a Honda 50 and only missed two weeks work in his life um, uh, uh, through flu and that made the economy stronger you know what I mean like why have these guys not for the last 20 years been actually um, sowing the seeds for um, Irish people to have more children so that they don't have to go abroad making things being able to make a uh, um, life easier for people to make have more children and and actually to uh, uh, create an ethos about uh, larger families so that um, um, then Irish people in their own homeland could actually fill those positions instead of it all being about money 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 we need to get in as many low-wage workers as we can because then we can pay them less and um, to hell with the future of Irish people in Ireland. Culture, and it's never right uh, to um, pick out the wrongs of a minority within a group and then, um, if you like, tar an entire group of people with the one brush. And that is what she did. Well, I would agree with that. That's one thing in this interview I will agree with. But did you notice the way he pulled out the, his, his father being a migrant card? You know? He's the perfect person, isn't he? Like, isn't it amazing that at this moment in time, when mass immigration is happening to Ireland and uh, um, Ireland is uh, officially is one-fifth non-Irish 
Uh, and I just throw out these st uh, stats again, as, as I always do. One third of social housing in Dublin is non-Irish. Um, over 50%, over half of student accommodation in Dublin is non-Irish. Uh, one third of my hometown where I was born and raised is non-Irish. Uh, and so on and so on across towns and villages all across Ireland. Um, they, they've been bringing in um, Syrians, uh, Syrians, uh, even though they're uh, the two, the two largest numbers presenting themselves for refugee status are Albanians and Georgians, where there's no conflict in either of those countries. Uh, they've been bringing in Syrians from uh, from Syria, even though Syria now is rebuilding itself, um, and they want their people back. Um, they've been they've been they've been uh, uh, throwing ten, twenty, thirty Syrians into direct plantation centers all around the country. They wanted to put them on Ackle Island. <laughs> oh man, clown world indeed. And what she said in those original comments. Do you think though that she resonates with a, a fraction of the population? Uh, I fear that. Um, uh, I fear that may be the case. Um, fear. But I hope not enough um, that we would see uh, the, uh, the emergence, emergence of uh, a far right, far right, uh, right. Uh, in the way we have yes. seen, unfortunately, in other countries. We've avoided that here. Uh, We've avoided I'm that. We should continue to. Anybody get an idea what the far right is? Anyone? Anyone? Class? Hands? Anyone? Hmm? Show of hands, anybody? Anybody? No? 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 Far right? Far right? Anybody know what that means? People standing up for their own homeland, wanting a home for their own people in their own homeland? Is that far right? Anybody? That and certain people who have those uh, views or wish to pursue those policies aren't aren't um, going to belong to the Fine Gael that I lead. And bear in mind, you know, we're the party that has granted uh, citizenship to 120,000 migrants. We've given asylum seekers the right to work after nine months. We sent uh, our navy down to the Mediterranean to help rescue migrants. Um, <laughs> Vulnerable people. Vulnerable. 12,000 Brazilians and 7,000 Indians into Ireland in 2018 and that's excluding all who he's mentioning here now that the refugees <laughs> that they ferried from the Mediterranean to here you know you know we've done a huge amount of things in this space and I'm sad now that that's been tarnished by this experience all right we'll take a short break and resume our conversation with them all right so that's it really um, and I'll get that face off the screen uh, before I conclude the video and my, my light here is starting to die anyway. So, um, all right. So uh, I just wanted to draw attention to that thing because I think that again shows how this guy, he's, he's got, probably going to be gone in the next election. And um, you need to get out there and vote for and get people who don't normally vote. Just tell them there's 10,000 people homeless who don't have a vote in this country because they don't have a fixed abode. Tell them they, they especially the women. women, women have a vote now. And women tend not, tend not to care, tend not to want to investigate what power is. You understand? So just listen to the men in, in your lives. Listen to, the, listen to them telling the truth about wanting Ireland for the Irish, that there's nothing wrong with that. That's starting, that sentiment is starting to grow. That's what he's terming as far right. So you understand this is uh, the manipulation of narrative through rhetoric. Okay, so I hope you get educated on this and how rhetoric works. And um, you know, we're poking fun and holes in, in these guys anyway, so it's it's, it's a bit of crack. All right, so uh, take it easy, and until the next vid, take care.